for your perusal there at Kogo.com. Joining us now with our weekly State of San Diego address is political analyst John Dadian from Dadian and Associates and a big Chargers fan. Uh, John, fourth string running. This is the important stuff. We'll talk about all the other stuff later, John. This is the important stuff. Fourth string running back looks dynamite here for the Chargers. I mean, yesterday was as good as it gets, but uh, you tell me if I'm making too, if I'm doing too far a stretch here for the analogy. But yesterday, the way the Chargers played, I think there's an analogy to the 52nd Congressional because it's very tight going into the fourth quarter, and so both sides think they can get over the end right in the f- few final minutes. And I think uh, both candidates were watching the Chargers game yesterday. All right, so this one could be a big uh, fourth quarter comeback or some sort of a, a, some heroics at the end. Uh, when we come to, when it comes to this 52nd congressional race, big, big uh, allegations coming to light now from the DeMaio campaign. These are allegations that were made earlier this summer, didn't really go anywhere because we were told anyway that the uh, the police department dismissed these allegations without merit. What's going on now? Well, I don't think we've really gotten a formal uh uh, response as far as what the status is of the investigation. So I think that's a big issue that's out there since this has now, within the last week, gotten national prominence. Um, and then you've got all these other little sub-factors going in there, such as both sides say they've taken a lie detector test and both have passed. And so everybody really is uh, scratching their heads at this point. But the race itself was always national prominence because uh, it, it's one of the top five races in the entire country. How However, the CNN interview with the accuser really made the, these allegations a national story. So the accuser is Todd Bosnich. He's a former campaign staffer. And uh, work through this with me because we've got his accusations and then we've got uh, Carl DeMaio explains the motivation behind some of these accusations. The accusations got pretty lewd here as, as uh, the story uh, took the, that national stage. That, that's right. It's it's basically the accusations are of sexual harassment and of several incidences, not just one, of several uh, times that there were you know improper behavior. Uh, so that's it's, you know in the generality. But the question I've been uh, a lot of people have asked me over the past week, Chris, is you know is this uh, going to what we call the October surprise going in the last weeks of the campaigns? Is this dirty tricks? Well, normally the definition in politics of dirty tricks is when the other side you know pulls something. But this is being brought by somebody, and as you said, it was brought back in the primary back in May. Uh, but th- this is uh, from somebody who you know was at one point a loyal staffer, who was a senior. They called him the policy person uh, for the campaign. So it's not like it was a Democrat. From what we know, it's not like it was a Democratic plan or whatever. This is a guy who was a Demio supporter, wanted to be on the campaign, and then, according to him, things happened that have totally disillusioned him. So I guess the question. And John Dadian from Dating the Associates, our political analyst with this week's State of San Diego. The question then is if this if if the accusations came out last spring and the lie detector that that uh, Todd Bosnich took, Todd is the, the former campaign staffer that we're talking about. That happened, uh, according to the, the 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 documents I've seen, that happened on June 14th. Uh, if all this stuff happened so many months ago, why is it still in the headlines? Who's keeping it there? Is it Bosnich that's keep, that, that continues to press forward, trying to get the ear of anyone that will listen? Or is this someone from the from the Peters campaign or a, a Peters supporter that, that keeps saying, hey, we, we really need to keep this story at, at the, you know, at the forefront. We need to keep this in the headlines. It, it is a little uh, – it's a great question because it is a little unclear uh, who brought it to CNN. Uh, uh, looks like it was probably Bosnitz, but we're uh, – I've read different reports, so I'm not sure, but it was the CNN report that clearly blasted this onto the national stage, without a doubt. And let me just put it in perspective, just from a historical perspective. If you look at most of our major scandals in history, they have taken a time to percolate. I mean, if you look at the most famous one in our history, Watergate, you know, for for months, everybody dismissed it as a third-rate burglary, and it took almost a year before it really became a prominence of people, and the average man and woman on the street were taking notice. So this is not unusual. Now, 
I use Watergate as an example, but we're in a different environment now with you know not you know twenty four hour news service with all the social media. So uh, some people are a little surprised it took this long, but it's not completely surprising to me. All right, uh, I'll have more coverage on this uh, this DeMaio. Uh, development, I guess, here at 8 o'clock today. We'll talk uh, at length about exactly what is going on. Uh, John, let's shift a little bit away from that. Let's talk about people trying to register here in San Diego County because there is still time. So absolutely. The uh, the 20th of this month is the last date to register. So uh, you got to get it in. And then, of course, the other important date uh, is already going on as you and I speak is the uh, the, the absentee ballots or the mail in ballots, as they call them now, are now in the mail uh, for people. So uh, th- those are two, two, two things that are going on as you and I speak this morning. And they're very important to anybody who wants to participate in this election. And Locally, there's two regions that are really, it's going to count that every vote's going to really matter. And that is what we just talked about, the 52nd Congressional, but also the uh, 6th District of the City Council, which is basically the Claremont, Mira Mesa area. If you live in any of those two districts, boy, you better not only register to vote, you better get that vote in uh, because it will make a difference, I guarantee it. Yeah, those uh, both those races that you're talking about are very close there. John, let's talk about those uh, the mail-in ballots. We know that the, the turnout... Uh, the physical turnout for the primaries was very, very low, whereas the mail-in, the mail-in ballots took, what do we say, 60 or 70 percent of the votes came via mail-in ballots, did they not? It was about 70 percent. Uh, huge. Last time in the primary, and it'll be at least that. If not, uh, the, absolutely, people love this. Uh, again. Uh, I remember in my day, sounding like an old man, where you had to have some requirement to vote a mail, whether it be health or some other reasons. Of course, that changed many years ago, and over the, the last several, almost you know, for the past decade, every campaign cycle we've seen an increase in mail-in uh, ballots without doubt, and we'll continue to see it. And I suppose we could probably take a, a few different stabs as to why that is, is the, the what I like to call concierge voting is the mail-in ballot. We could we could say, you know, is this because people are lazy? Is it because we don't want to stand in line? Is it because we're too busy? Not because we're lazy, but rather because we're too busy. Is this, uh, is this a, a call for a movement on our elections to move from Tuesdays to a weekend day? All kinds of conversations we could have stemming from just that statistic alone, right? Well, you certainly could have those conversations, but again, the reasons, the possible reasons that you gave, uh, whether people are lazy, whether it's convenient, whatever reason, John Dadian's response is, I don't care. They're voting. <laughs> they're voting. That's a you great know, point. They're voting. And, and there, there, there really are uh, studies that show that a good majority of these people either wouldn't have voted before, wouldn't have voted this time, however you want to phrase it. Mm-hmm. So th- th- that's all good. I, I want to be a little careful on things such as weekend voting and things such as that, because then you, you have to be real careful and make sure that, you know, we have had accusations passed of ghost voting, that type of thing. We want to make sure that doesn't happen. And you can control that pretty well in the mail-in voting type system. All right. John Dadian from Dadian Associates with this week's State of San Diego. John, as always, a pleasure. Thank you so much for your time this morning, my friend. And, and Chris, next week, uh, in addition to politics, we'll be talking about another charger win. I, I'm in. I'm in. Thanks, John. Take care, pal. John Dadian, Dadian Associates, News Radio 600, Kogo at 636. Uh,